Okay, so ladies, on today's podcast, I have got such an exciting and interesting guest for you. His name is George Hendley, and he is the coach at the Speakers Academy. His focus is to work with business leaders who want to speak with confidence. The Speakers Academy draw from over 40 years of unique and varied work experience and have over 27 years of successful business ownership too. They have actively engaged in both the corporate and non-profit arenas with a special focus in the financial services and the healthcare industries too. George has been a Diamond Award winner twice for the Wiley Publishing Selling and delivering workshops for over 25 years. Plus, not forgetting he's, he was also awarded the Mentor of the Year Award by the company in 2001. So ladies and gents who are listening, I welcome you today, George Hendley. Welcome to the podcast today, George. Lynn, it is a pleasure being with you today. And I, and I have to say this before we go any further. I really love listening to your voice and the accent that you have. Oh. And you may be thinking, oh, he's got a Texas accent. <laughs> Not really. Mine's kind of a mixed potpourri from coast to coast. But yeah, yeah it's, it's a, getting a little bit more of a drawl since I've been here for 35 years. Wow. Wow. Yeah, your accent is a mixture of things. It's not quite that Texan drawl, as you call it. <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. But yeah, I'm so glad to have you on the show today and just to really hear more about you. Um, so I was just thinking there's so much things that we can talk about, but I know we've only got a short amount of time today, so I thought let's start off bit by bit and we'll go through a couple of questions. So I thought, first of all, it's quite a big question actually. I was thinking, right, you know about the 11 core delivery skills, um, what are they and the, um, how do they make the foundation of a great presentation? Good. I like that question. I gave it to you. <laughs> 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 well, Leanne and all of you wonderful listeners out there in Leanne Landville, yeah. uh, the way I look at a presentation is what I call more holistically, bigger mm -hmm. picture. And I think in terms of every single day, every day, if yeah. you're talking to even one person, you're making a presentation. Yes. And, and we too often times think in terms of presentations being in a real formal type of way. Mm -hmm. That's not the way I see it. Every day we're making both formal, perhaps, but especially informal presentations. Mm -hmm. So our whole day is peppered, spiced, put together with presentation after presentation after presentation. Some are visual as in the connection that Leanne and I share right now. Some are strictly auditory as in on the phone. And so we have these different kinds of presentation. Some are one on one or one on three or one on five. It could be just with a group of your friends, your peers, your work buddies, your, your, your playmates. Mm -hmm. But in the bigger world, thinking in terms of every day gives us a chance to practice yeah. presentation skills. Now, back to that specific question. With this holistic view that I tend to look at presentations, I say that every great presentation has three specific parts. Mm -hmm. There's a preparation piece, there's a delivery piece, mm -hmm. and then a follow through piece. So let's talk specifically about the delivery piece. That's the piece that gets people ah, yes. nervous. That's the piece <laughs> that causes them to think, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this and not look like a fool? Yes. <laughs> and, and the bottom line is you've been doing presentations since the first time you were talking to mommy and daddy and then goo, 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 ba, 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 Kind of yeah. stuff. So, so take the edge off, chill, shall we say, <laughs> you know, uh, have a brew, mm -hmm. take it easy on this whole thing yeah. and realize that it can be very conversational. As a matter of yeah. fact, I believe the, the better presentations are just that. Mm -hmm. They are truly not a one way diatribe, but mm -hmm. a, a conversation. It's a dialogue that you're having. Sometimes you'll ask a question and it is rhetorical and you're not really expecting your audience to give you any verbal response, mm. maybe a nod of the head. That's <laughs> a good thing. 
but but bottom line if we keep our presentation delivery in a conversational way yeah then we quickly start to eliminate the nerves issues that tend to go oftentimes with a more formal presentation yeah. all right now again focusing back on that delivery piece delivery mm -hmm. the delivery piece is that piece that tends to make people nervous and there's two basic reasons they're they're afraid of being rejected or they're afraid of failing rejection or failure nobody likes it i don't like it you don't oh. like it nobody <laughs> no. likes rejection or feeling like a failure yeah so again let's let's just take those two pieces off the table because most people truly want you to succeed and deliver your message well yeah. They don't want to listen to a message that's not going to help them. No, so true. They want to hear something that's really going to inform, inspire, influence, or entertain them. Yeah. That's really what they want. And if you can even hit on one or two of those four ends, then you're doing well. Definitely. Now, I look at a presentation as in what I call the three V's. The delivery aspect is the three V's. The three V's stand for visual, vocal, and verbal, visual, vocal, and verbal. Now I have a great visual of my friend Leanne, and that makes the conversation that much more enjoyable because I can see her animated face, her smile, her engagement, she's writing, she's taking notes. That makes me excited to be able to stay in tune with her. So I have a great visual of her. But when you are the quote speaker, when you're the presenter, when you're the one that's on stage, on the platform, or just sitting there again, chatting with your friends at coffee, then, then there are certain things that they are looking at in the light of you delivering your message. And I oftentimes say this very simply, you are the message. You are the message. Everything about you makes the message. Now, what do I really mean by that? Very simply this, the first and most important part of you being the message is the visual of you. The visual of you is either going to make you or potentially break you, as in make the message fuzzy, make the message unclear, make the message difficult to hear. So there are five aspects of the visual. There are four aspects of the vocal. There are two aspects of the verbal. Now, Leanne, I've been talking for a while. Do you want me to keep yapping or do you want to ask another question? Along no, the way? I, I've written down that there's five on the visual, four on the vocal and two on the verbal. Can you like, so in visual, I never really looked at a presentation in these things because I would have thought, isn't vocal verbal? Is verbal not the same as vocal? for for mm. me of my understanding mm. of that um mm -hmm. and then when you when you can you break down within the the five parts within the visual then yes. what's the difference between the four points in the vocal then mm -hmm. the difference of the two parts in the verbal that would be helpful i think oh, yeah absolutely absolutely all right so again trying from that visual perspective mm. We, whoever, again, is the focal point of delivering the message, the very first thing, let's say you're meeting with some of your, I'll use an Aussie term, a mate. Hey, buddy. <laughs> I don't know the term they use in, in Great Britain. What, what's the term they, there? They would use mate as well, actually. Yeah. They okay. Use that that's too. good. So, so, but you're meeting at a pub and from 40 or 50 meters away, you see one of your mates. Yeah. What's the very first thing you see and notice about him or her? I would just know, I would just recognize their kind of face and structure for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. But, but if there's anything else, what might be the first thing that you notice? Again, you haven't even really seen a clear focus of their face mm. before you even notice their face because it's a good ways away what yeah. might be something that you begin to pick up on if they're far away i'd see their walk because some people their have a walk. Dis yeah their walk okay very distinctive okay. walk um sometimes if they've always got a particular jacket on they always have a particular pair of shoes uh, okay 
Now, see, I love the color that you're wearing today and the color you have in your background. That's the very first thing I notice about you. You're, uh, shall we say, borderline flamboyant because you have, gold, <laughs> <laughs> you have gold stars in the background. You have these beautiful purples and, and uh, I don't know if that's not chartreuse, but what, what are those colors that you're wearing in the chair behind you? Yeah, so like I think these flat these colours actually match my backdrop today. So uh, pink, okay, yes. blues, and purples. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect, perfect. So the thing that I point out to people is very simply this: what you wear, as in your attire, yeah, and your grooming, is the first thing that people really see and notice. Ah. What you wear. You said it in the fact that you said jacket and shoes. Yeah. What people wear begins to tell us about them. Yes. A lot, actually. Definitely. You know, I could have come into this little time together all buttoned up because I believe it or not, I do have a tux and I wear it on special occasions. I have several suits and I've got dozens of these ties that I bought years and years ago. Mm -hmm. Today, we don't wear that kind of stuff in the business environment. No. But the very first thing that people see yeah. is what are you attired with? So I call it attire and grooming. Mm -hmm. Attire and grooming is the first thing they see and it begins to tell them about you. Mm -hmm. Are you dressed? shall we say, in a very scanty attire, mm -hmm. or are mm -hmm. you because of the weather or whatever it might be, yeah. with an overcoat, muffs, and ears? I mean, there's so much that we can begin to pick up on. Yeah. Person, by the way, they dress or attire yeah. and groom themselves. I see you've got these big danglies, as in yep. earrings that kind of dangle, and I bet that's probably par for the course, that you like to wear something like that. Yep. I'm not wearing mine today. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I don't have any. So, <laughs> so I'm not into the dangly things. Yeah. <laughs> don't have a nose ring. Don't have dangly yeah. things. Ears. Don't have any ear or lip piercings. I'm mm. kind of in the non-piercing arena. <laughs> the very first thing we notice moving ahead is a tiring grooming. That mm. tells us a lot about the messenger and the yeah. message they're trying to deliver to us because mm -hmm. that shows us a part of their personality, mm -hmm. how they think and mm -hmm. the kind of message that they potentially may be delivering to us. Yeah. Okay. So a tire and grooming, number one, from a very far distance, 40, 50, 60 meters away, we mm -hmm. begin to see a person, judge a person and it's yep. subconscious. It's not consciously thinking, why is he wearing that? It's just like, Oh, He's wearing something unusual today. The mm -hmm. first thing you pick up. All right. So that's the very first thing in, in the visual, the five aspects of the visual. Yeah. Room, number three. You mentioned the, the way they walk and that ties to the second thing because the second thing yeah. is what I call posture and position. Posture yes. And position, posture and position. Posture is the way you stand, the way you carry yourself mm -hmm. the way you sit mm -hmm. however you're holding your frame your body shows that you either have a lot of energy you're yeah. in control and you're able to deliver that dynamism with control and direction or you're all over the place going crazy <laughs> like a kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah like a kid like and a i'm kid. a kid at heart so <laughs> sometimes i do that kind of crazy stuff yeah. but your, your posturing tells you a lot about the person. Have, mm -hmm. you know, in, I played football, American football in college and high school. Okay. But I know in, in Great Britain or in the UK, it's football as in what we call soccer. So let's yeah. say you're at the World Cup and one team, uh, shall we say Bristol or, or uh, what's one of those big teams in England? In football, like Manchester United, oh, okay. Arsenal. Manchester, Manchester. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so Manchester is the, the, the reigning team and they're crushing everybody else. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, in the World Cup finals, they are crushing their, their opponents. And you're able to see the sidelines of the opponents. How do you think in the closing minutes of the game, Manchester's opponents would look if they're being beat five or six or seven Zip. Yeah, they'll be, you will barely see them. They'll be just slumped over or they're just, they're, they're arguing amongst themselves or just often you see them kind of doing this type of move, mm -hmm. something like mm -hmm. that. Just hands so, throwing. 
so so they're posturing themselves in a position of defeat yeah a position of frustration mm -hmm. a position of we are beat yes so the posturing is a huge piece mm -hmm. in the visual mm -hmm. that second aspect of the p in in, in the, the physical arena is the position now right now i'm at roughly two and a half to three feet from my camera. I can get really up close like that. Yeah. Or I can get way, way back. Uh, like back. That. Yeah. So, but the position is again, in relative to what I'm trying to accomplish with you. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be at the right distance, not too close, mm -hmm. not too far. Mm -hmm. the, the word I use is proximity. Yeah. As in proximity which is all about distance between you and the person or people mm -hmm. that you're speaking to. So your distance between that person, if you've got an intimate relationship, mm -hmm. typically the distance gets closer and closer mm -hmm. and closer. Yeah. If it's not so intimate, then you mm -hmm. keep what we'll call that casual distance between you and the yeah. friend or the buddy or the peer, or the mates. And, okay. and it's comfortable that way. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So there's your first two, attire and grooming, posture and position. Yeah. Posture and position. Number three, you're getting closer and closer to this person. And the next thing you see them do is they're waving at you. A yeah. wave is what I call a gesture. And in that case, a friendly gesture. Yeah. And, and, and that wave says to, to you in a nonverbal way, hi. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Friend. So all that we do in the gesturing arena is our body language expressing itself in the message that we're sending. No words attached, no mm -hmm. sounds attached, strictly our body expressing itself. Mm -hmm. And the body okay. does express itself oftentimes again, yes. very unconsciously. Yeah very unconsciously yeah so as an example if i shall if i sort of do one of these numbers yeah and i'm tur turning away from you what what is that really signaling to you at this point in time um that you're losing interest and <laughs> something else over that side of the room might kind of be a bit more interesting so 60 percent attention <laughs> you got it and that's so true so if you as a presenter are noticing your audience members, an audience yeah. of one, three, five, or 15 or 500, yeah. and they're starting to show that kind of body gesturing, mm -hmm. or if you are talking to the wall or the ceiling or the floor, rather yeah. than giving them the attention that they require, then all of a sudden the message that you're sending in a visual sense mm. is out of focus. It's out of skew. It's not mm. the way we want it to be yeah i understand that definitely so okay. your gestures need to support what you're saying perfect mm -hmm. well said leanne that's the perfect way to put it yeah your gestures are part of the message they yeah. need to be supportive of congruent with mm -hmm. the overall message itself yeah now I get we've, that. we've just covered three of the five yeah now we're, now we're getting in closer and we're on only maybe three or four typically the first or the next thing that we really focus on at that point in time mm -hmm. facial expressions yeah facial expressions facial expressions the yeah. face is the place to again show the emotions of the moment yes the face is the place to show the emotions of the moment and if you're joyful and happy to see this friend yeah what is typically smiling the say yeah it's going to be it's going to be smiling. The yeah. eyes will be open and, and bright. So there's all of these facial things that we do to say, I'm so happy to see you. Yeah. We're going to have a good time here tonight. Mm -hmm. Let's make this a fun time together. So yeah. the face is the place and the face really, again, will emote and show mm -hmm. a variety of emotions. Yeah. There's this thing called a mime and a mime mm -hmm. is a professional man or woman. Mm -hmm. And they say words. Mm -hmm. It's all with their face and their body yeah. that they bring forth the message. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do they, do they deliver their message? They do. Oh, yes, they do. They do. 
They do. I've n- seen them. Not even a not even a sound from their voice, no. and they deliver their message. Yeah, it's true. Very, very good. Okay, yeah. so that's four. Four. The facial expressions is number four. Now, yep. let's get into that tight, tiny little space. That oh. is number five. Okay, eye contact. Now, I used to use that phrase, yeah. Liam, but I changed it slightly. Okay. I changed it slightly is because we want more than eye contact. Eye contact could be a half or three quarters of a like, So I yeah. talk about eye connection. Ah, yeah. Eye connection. Eye connection. If you're really in tune mm. and wanting to make a strong connection, mm. it is the eye connection, mm-hmm. not just the contact, that makes the difference. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It makes all the difference in the world. The eye Definitely. connection. Now, some people say, George, I don't want to stare at someone. And that's true. We don't want to yep. stare. <laughs> we don't want to stare <laughs> them down. So yeah. what do we do? Well, we we hold the connection for four, five, six seconds, mm-hmm. and then we find a different pair of eyes, and then another different pair of eyes, and then another different pair. So in reality, you know what you're doing? You're speaking to one person four to six seconds, and then you're finding another pair of what I call happy eyes. And you're speaking to to Charlie over here for four to six seconds. Yeah. Then you're speaking back over here to Susan for four to six seconds. Then you're speaking to Baba over here for four to six yeah, seconds. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. Yeah. So rather than just like connect, it's to uh, connection, which it's a longer period of time. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a longer period of time. A more mm-hmm. intentional, longer mm-hmm. period of time. So there's yeah. a strong intention. The, the philosophers have said, and we know this is true, the eyes are the windows of the soul. Yes. The eyes are the windows of the soul. So if yeah. we are really going to make that window open up and show mm-hmm. what we're trying to show, then we need to make a stronger connection. Yeah, definitely. And, and that would, for the stronger connection, you need a, a little bit longer time. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah, I get that. Nice. Okay. And then what's number six? No, that one only has five. Whoop, whoop, whoop. That one only has five. Vocal. You said vocal has four parts. Then four verbal parts. has two parts. And I think this part would really help me to really understand it. Because I would have probably, just from my training background, I would have probably grouped them all together. Because it's the sure. same the same instrument that it comes from, just from my kind of mindset. I'd really like to hear, how do you break those two groups down? Mm -hmm. Good, good question. The vocal is the sound box. Mm. Yep. It's the sound box. And if I speak in a deeper, more resonant sound, Mm -hmm. it sounds different than if I'm Pee Wee Herman. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> it does. So the the vocal is about the sound, and there are four basic again basic mm-hmm. elements of the sound: volume, yep, emphasis, pacing, mm-hmm. and pitch. V e p p. Volume, emphasis, pacing, and pitch. Volume, mm-hmm. emphasis, pacing, and pitch. Yep. Volume yep. is pretty simple. How loud? How yeah. soft? Mm-hmm. How loud? How soft? Yeah. So the volume, you know, fluctuates. And most of the time we want to keep it at about a five or six, sometimes a four. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we'll really jack it up to an eight, nine, or 10. Yeah. We're speaking in a two or a three, like a whisper. Yeah. That's what we want in volume, variety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other piece that we want some real variety is the pacing, which is the speed. Mm -hmm. The pacing is the speed of the delivery. Mm -hmm. Sometimes will slow it down yes. almost to a crawl. Yeah. Now, yep. in the United States, we have this thing called the Indy 500. Okay. The Indy, the Indy 500 is a, a car race. Oh, okay. And, and it is on a giant oval, huge oval trackway. Yeah. The Indy 500 is all about speed, speed, and more speed. Wow. Okay. Very different than this thing called the Le Mans. The Le Mans Hmm. is about 
open stretches and then mm. tight turns. Mm. Open stretches and tight turns. So wow. Le Mans is not just about speed. It's about also being able to handle those tight turns yep. and slow down and gear down and slow down and gear down and speed mm -hmm. up and speed up. And that's really what we're looking for more oftentimes mm -hmm. in the pacing. We don't want Indy 500 and mm -hmm. wears people out. Yeah. We want more of a, of a Le Mans, slow down, speed up, slow down, mm -hmm. speed up. Yeah. Most of us speak at about 140 to 160 words per minute, but we might speed up at times. It's, you know, as far as it's 200 words a minute, if we're yeah. really excited and trying to get something out. Yeah, definitely. Then other times we'll really slow it down. Yeah. Now, emphasis and pitch. Emphasis mm -hmm. is about the emphasis that mm -hmm. we place on a certain word yes. or phrase. That, that extra punch that we use on a word or phrase that really kind of brings it into the forefront. Yeah. And you can say the same phrase three, four, five, six different ways. Yes. And it's all about the emphasis you place. Mm -hmm on a word or a phrase. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now, finally, the pitch. The pitch is about tone or tonality. Mm -hmm. And what the, the research shows is that from a tonality point of view, in light of selling a product or persuading someone, it mm -hmm. is typically the deeper, more resonant tones Mm -hmm. that are authoritative yes. and easier to listen to. Yes. The James Earl Jones. Yeah. Or, or the Morgan Freeman tone. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Herman. <laughs> it's just so hard on the ear, that height. Yeah. Yeah. So there it is. That's yeah. the vocal. Nothing about words, but no. the sounds and the way those sounds are delivered. Volume, yeah. emphasis, pacing, and pitch. Mm -hmm. Got that. I get it. Okay. I know you, I know you do. You're a voice specialist. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I hope the listeners got that part as well, too, because that's really, really key to really make a great speaker. And then... What about verbal? How is verbal different from vocal? And what two parts really kind of go under verbal? Okay. If, you know, I kind of, sort of, you know, hmm. talk about and throw in sort of a kind of, uh, uh, hmm, uh, you, you, you know what that's called, Leanne? That's called, that's called fluff and fluff, filler. Fluff fillers. Um, yeah. That you don't want, that you don't need, mm -hmm. that your listeners don't want or no. don't need. No, no, no. <laughs> so yeah. it's, it's as bad as, <laughs> this is kind of gross, but it's as bad as a booger hanging out of your nose mm -hmm. or spinach in your teeth. Yep. It's distracting. Very distracting. <laughs> Very distracting. So we yeah. have to eliminate all the fluff and the filler, mm -hmm. the non words like the ums, the uhs, the you knows, the so's, the mm -hmm. kind of those, so all those non words are non working words. And then, then we do one thing. What's that one thing? Do we actually use the words we should be using to put the message through? Yes, it sounds quite simple. We do one thing. Talk. We pause. Ah, I like pausing. We pause. Now, if you're strictly on an audio connection, mm. a long pause will make people think, uh, Leanne, are you still there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but because I can see you, I can see you're still there. So I don't yeah. need to worry about our connection. Mm hmm. All I'm really trying to do is set you up for the next thing that I'm going to say and cause you to digest what I've just said mm -hmm. and not try to cram too much into your mental yeah. chamber all at one point in time. Mm -hmm. 
Definitely. So pause, as they say, silence is golden, and a pause is a way to deliver a moment yeah. of silence. Definitely. There it is. Two things. Two, yes. Two things. Two things. Eliminate the fluff and the filler, mm -hmm. the non-working words, the, the, the sounds that just kind of come out. Definitely. And replace that with a pause. Yeah. Wow, that's been brilliant. And that was only question one. Okay. So, <laughs> that was, I'm going to kind of. You're going to, we're going to run through the rest of this fast now. Aren't we? <laughs> I'm going to kind of summarize. I, I, I didn't know it was in those different parts. So just kind of summarizing about like audio presentations. And I really like the part that you said that um, they're in three parts mm -hmm. and that it's preparation, it's the delivery and it's the follow through as well. Mm -hmm. And I mm -hmm. think what was really key is what is not always kind of, there's not even like you, you, you don't even really always learn it at school or things like that in presentations to always have to be able to relax and have and see it as a conversation. Although it could be a conversation if you said one or two or five, it could be thousands see it as conversations and I, and what I liked about that we said about conversations is that links back into I'll go into that part a, a bit in when you said in visual about when it's the eye contact not eye contact to have an eye connection and that links in with having a conversation because when you have a conversation with someone you do give eye co connection eye contact you're doing speak with the eyes at the same time and I really liked how those two for me they really linked through and it's so true whenever you go to speak, the fear of rejection, the fear of failure, even like when you go to a shop, may have to ask for a product, is this here? There's a chance, 50-50 chance you're going to get rejected. No, we don't have it, you know, things like that. So it's always, there's always that risk. And even at speaking, like, could be a seasoned speaker, could be done it once or whatever. And there's always this, like, there's this fear that kind of comes in and stuff and I and I really love these 11 core delivery skills I wish this could be taught at school <laughs> when you have to stand up and do a presentation so that when you learn presentations you can learn them effectively rather than learning bad presentation skills and trying to get rid of the bad thing when you're old and put in new stuff that's a harder way to learn but having visual of the five key components of attire and grooming is so key it has to match what you're saying and stuff and posture and and position and things like that that's key because if you come in there and your shoulders shoulders are down I'm like I'm not listening to someone like that I've already I've just made a decision like whether I've said it or not I've just or my mind has made a decision start doing the shopping list when someone comes onto the stage like that you know and gestures <laughs> gestures they need to support what we are saying and I love I'm a big fan of Big fan of talking, but big fan of facial expressions as well. Because I think you can do so much more. And, and sometimes you can see some people are speaking that if they would just engage the face a bit more, they wouldn't have to use so many words because the face would just <laughs> do a bit more of it for them. And I, and I really love that point, facial expressions. I like that you said, face is the place to show the emotion of the moment. And it can do wonders, you know. And this eye connection... Um, I contact one, which I felt linked really much. So presentations are a conversation with one, two or thousands, etc. And, and I really like how you broke down vocal with verbal. Um, so vocal is obviously it's come from the sound box. It's the volume, how loud or how quiet are you talking emphasis, like which words are you going to hit? harder and stuff and the pace that you're going to go talk, talk really quickly which I can often do um, and then the pitch with, which links to tone and stuff like that is it soft or etc and verbal and I am I know that I have lots of kind of non-words ums and sounds and things but um, I hope that I can always be more conscious of it because it is a natural thing when you've not quite got it all smooth or you're thinking like oh what was the next point or shall I put this point in is the audience ready to hear this part but I, I know the non-words are very distracting to hear 100% and pauses I love dramatic pauses it's like <laughs> if I was a writer it would be like a full stop or the gap between the paragraph I get it and it brings you in I like you says it gets you ready gears you up for the next thing and I really like that kind of insight on it Definitely, that was really, really, really good. Wow. Okay. What we're we going to so, talk about so, next? <laughs> so, Leanne, can I stop right here? Yeah. 
I must, I must again point out something. Yeah. And this is very important, very important. You have exemplified the traits of an engaged listener. Mm -hmm. and, and if we're really going to make a connection, if we're really going to make a connection, and that's what life is yes. about, it's about making connections. We tend to think our connections are formed because of the words that we speak. No. Actually, actually, it's because of the listening that we exemplify. Mm -hmm. Definitely. The, listening, the listening exemplifies our intent to connect. Yes. I can run my mouth a thousand miles an hour and, and spout off all this stuff but it doesn't really connect us until, mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. I take a moment to listen to what you say. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you, thank you for listening this morning. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I'm learning a lot. I feel like I'm going back to school myself. Um, <laughs> really, really good. Um, and then thank you for about the 11 core delivery skills. Like, I think we should, we should have another podcast just about those because there's so much in those ones, so much. But we will not. We'll go on to the next question. And um, so I wanted to ask the question that we kind of spoke about. What does SAY, S-A-Y, represent in forming the basis for your preparation for a great presentation? I do my best because I need this, and I think a lot of people need this, to simplify and clarify what are the most important aspects mm. of whatever part. Now, I would like to cut it back from 11 to 7. Mm -hmm. That would be easier to remember. But as much as I've tried to clean away and clear away, I can't cut back the 11 to 7. We yeah. just miss too many things. Mm -hmm. So with the SAY formula, I, I believe I've given you the three most important aspects of preparation. Mm -hmm. And I've given it to you in a way that's easy to remember. Say, yeah. say, yeah. say, yeah. yeah. So if I'm going to prepare well, I must know the subject. Yes. I must know my audience. Mm -hmm. I must know myself, as in know yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, the first two are pretty self-evident. Yeah. Know your subject, know your audience. But it's actually... Leanne, it's actually the, the self-awareness yeah. that is the most important of the three. Mm -hmm. It's the most important of the three. And I'll get to mm -hmm. that in a moment because I want to handle it S-A-Y. Know your subject. <clears throat> in today's world, we're, we're mm -hmm. looking for and hoping to hear what's called a subject matter expert. Yeah. The abbreviation is a SME. A SME is a subject matter expert. Someone who really knows their subject. Yep. Someone who deeply knows mm -hmm. their subject, someone who spent time mm -hmm. and, and lived, you might say, their subject. Mm -hmm. When you're listening to a subject matter expert, if they know how to deliver well, mm -hmm. you just sit there and go. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You just go, wow. wow. <laughs> I never saw it that way. Yes. And that's what a good subject matter expert can do. They yeah. can decorate your mind with all of these little things that you're going, that is amazing. Mm -hmm. And that again is showing their subject matter expertise. Yeah. That deep awareness and sense of what will help this subject come alive for this mm -hmm. per person. Yeah. So the subject, knowing your subject is critical and you can never, know too much no you definitely never know not. too much yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> behind me you see that bookcase yep that's one of four wow that's yes. one of four the other three are out in the hallway yeah. back over here between the, the, the bedrooms yes. <laughs> so i'm constantly learning my my wife yeah. calls me a bookaholic, bookaholic. <laughs> and I, and I <laughs> i'm addicted i'm yes. addicted so anyway, subject matter expertise, number one. Mm. A, audience. Know your audience. Yes. <clears throat> now, you had mentioned a little bit earlier about your desire to know about DISC, D-I-S-C. Yes. And we're, we're going to get to that. But the reality, very simply, is this. <clears throat> 
you can look at people and help categorize your audience, that person of one or five or 15 or 500, mm -hmm. in basically one of four general types of ways to describe them, mm -hmm. their behaviors, their thinking, their, their, their processing. Yeah. And the DISC describes those four different personality styles. And this is, this is insight that was recognized thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. Two guys, Galen and Hippocrates, Greek physicians, mm -hmm. began to record and write about what they called the four humors. And the yes. four humors were what we now call the four basic personality styles. Yeah. So that's a very deep subject. We could go on literally for hours about that. But bottom line, understanding, Leanne, you are one or a combination of those four. Mm -hmm. I am one or a combination of those four. Now, the okay. more I can understand who you are, Mm -hmm. and who I am, the better I can again make what we call a connection. Yeah. If I don't understand what you see and think and need and want, mm -hmm. then I'm going to try here and I'm going to try there and I'm mm -hmm. going to try here and, and, and I'm missing the connection. Mm -hmm. But if I say, oh, Leanne is showing me some wonderful aspects of the I and the S, Mm -hmm. And the I and the S tend to be very people oriented. Yeah. Are you a people person? Yeah, I think so. But then is that like, I don't know, I'm a people person, but then I enjoy my own company at the same time. So I kind of feel kind and of You mixed. are a people. You yes. are a people. <laughs> yes, I'm a people. I can entertain myself. And also entertain others. Yeah. yeah there you go. So, but the, in understanding people yourself yes. and others then you're able to easier connect mm. and, and it makes things more fluid it makes things mm. more harmonious it makes things more enjoyable mm -hmm. to be able to connect with people and to in a sense if you're very different than them for the time that you're with them become like them mm. okay in the time that you're with them to become more like them, to talk in their terms, mm -hmm. to speak their language, if you will. Yeah. And they'll feel, and they'll feel that you are really like them. And, and people love to be around people that are like them. Yep. Yes. And that's just natural. That's just a normal part of who we are. We like to be yeah. around people who are like us. Birds of a feather. Flock together. Very okay. true. So, so knowing your audience, critical in that connection point. Yeah. Critical in that connection point. And if I can know my audience, then I'll be better able to relate to him or her or them. Mm -hmm. Finally, and here's the final piece. And, and, and we kind of touched on this just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. The first person that you're interested in connecting with the first it's person you. is myself. Yeah. yeah it's you. <laughs> Definitely is myself. Who's the first person you look at when you're walking to the bathroom in the morning? Myself. Myself. Man, I need to do something with that face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But have you ever been in a group photo and then looked at that photo after the photo's taken? Who's the first person you look at? Myself myself if there's ever like a writing arc or a document that i've contributed to i don't really care what anybody else has written i'm looking for my own even though i wrote it myself i'm looking for my own writing i know it i wrote it i edited it i want to know what did i say yes yes <laughs> yes <laughs> so this term that's been used for 20 plus years now is a term called emotional intelligence yeah Emotional intelligence, EI or EQ, emotional quotient, emotional intelligence. Mm. And the very first foundational piece of emotional intelligence is self-awareness, mm. self-awareness. If we are truly deeply self-aware, mm. then we can find out where we're at in this bigger spectrum of behaviors. And then we can understand because of where I'm at now, this other person's way over here. If I'm going to connect with that other person, then I have to understand first where I'm at, London, 
East mm -hmm. London, or mm -hmm. where I'm at, Forney, East Dallas, wow. and understand for me to go from Forney, East Dallas, all the way to London, yes. I've got to do a lot of traveling. Yes. I've got to reach across the pond, shall we yeah. speak. I've got to be able to, I've got to be able to go a distance to make a true face to face connection. Definitely. So in understanding self, I am mm -hmm. at that focal starting point of being able to connect with others. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that is the crucial aspect of a great presentation. Yes. You've had people that you've sat in an audience and they may have been brilliant. They may have been subject matter experts, mm -hmm. but if they didn't connect with you and your emotional needs, mm -hmm. how quickly are they forgotten? Very quickly. Very I mean, quickly. You can, you can walk out the door and go, okay, what's our next thing? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And just be, yeah, what's next? Yeah. But if they made a deep emotional connection with mm. you, they understood you, they understood themselves, they understood the aspect of what they were trying to relate to you, but they mm -hmm. put it across to you in a way that says, Lynn, the thing that I want to make sure you hear today is you are a very special person. Yay. <laughs> And that connection point starts the relationship of mm. trust and relationship of communication. Yeah, very true. Very true. Essay wise, subject, audience, subject, yourself. And know yourself. Definitely. Yeah, it's quite hard to do a good presentation if you've got one of those lacking. I mean, if you're given a script to read, which often happens to me, I don't know what I'm talking about, I'm just reading off a script. But because I know who it's going to and I know what I can deliver, yes, I can see that. But I love it when you see an expert speaker. And I like to use the term decorate your mind. They can provide your mind information, make a picture in within your mind just by using their words. That's a really, really great speaker. And really knowing yourself. And that means, and I, for me, that also means being confident that I can deliver. That I know this information. I know who the audience is. And even more so, I know myself, and I know even if I've done it tons of times, once of times, I know I can do it. That's that's the thing. Know yourself. And um, emotional intelligence, not really spoken about at all. It's more so a push on academic intelligence. Um, and just, I love it, how to connect with others. Because I've been to huge conferences before, you know, some of the huge, you know, popular speaker names. And they always do a connection, whether it means they run down the rally hall giving high fives and stuff and, you know, giving a personal story, which brings the, it's, it's such a mixture of emotions. We're going from tears to joy to sadness and it's a bit of a roller coaster. But mm -hmm. I remember some of those talks from even 11 years ago. If you ask me if I went to one three years ago, last week, mm, sure. But one from 11 years ago because of how it was structured, the height of emotions and stuff and the music, boom, boom, boom. It was like, really, really, I get that. The, the, the need to connect. That's just a basic human need as well. The need to connect. I like There's, that. Very helpful. Do, you, do you know the movie Howard's End? No. It's what a great movie. It? I'm going to write it down. Hopefully Howard's it's on End. It's a, it's, End. A, it's a movie about a, a British couple. Ooh. An English couple, I guess. English, British. And, and there's one phrase. Yeah. There's just one phrase that says it all. Only connect. Mm. Only connect. Mm -hmm. that, that one simple phrase. And I, I, I use that quote quite frequently because... Yeah. That's what people want, whether it's a personal relationship, mm -hmm. whether it's a customer relationship, whether it's a uh, familial relationship mm -hmm. with a parent, a sibling, a child. Yeah. Only connect. Yeah. Very true. And I think even that's been so poignant over this kind of length of time, our lockdown still kind of happening, like to have that connection, like, and it raises awareness as well. It's like, do you have a connection? How deep or strong is the connection? Or do you have no connection at all? That's really, really true. I want to see that film. I'm going to try and look for it after, after our <laughs> call, definitely. So we spoke about SAY, S-A-Y. And then you did bring in D-I-S-C because I was like, I don't know what that is. Um, but that's really helped. It's cut, it took me back a bit 
to my degree days of personality because I remember we used to do that. I did a psychology and law degree and we did a little bit on the personality spectrum as well. I remember it came up, something similar to that, I think. And um, I wanted to go on. So we've looked at the core delivery skills. We looked at say, we looked at disc. And another question that I wanted us to talk about is how, how can you overcome nerves and the fear to speak so that you look and sound more confident? Is it possible to overcome it or is it something you have to kind of manage and kind of squat? How, how, how do you do it? Or what tips can you suggest? Mm -hmm. Good. When I was a, a small boy, my mother had a major task in working with me. Mm -hmm. It was because I had a speech impediment. Mm. And because of that speech impediment, I stuttered. Yep. I couldn't pronounce certain words or sounds. Then two of my older sisters were unmerciful to tease me. Mm. And yeah. my mom recognized that that would not be something that would help me in the future. So she recognized she needed to help me mm -hmm. begin to overcome my own personal limitations. Yeah. So, so number one, she was very patient with me, very loving, very understanding. Mm -hmm. and, and she helped me begin slowly, but definitely take steps forward in building my confidence yeah. but my confidence grew because my skills grew Leanne mm. if you think about everything that you know today and you're a mature mm -hmm. confident uh, polished professional mm -hmm. everything that you know and, and the reason you have the confidence you have today is because mm -hmm. you have learned a certain skill yeah and then you practiced it yeah. And then you learned another skill and you've practiced it. Mm -hmm. And you've learned another skill and you've practiced it. Mm -hmm. And think about this. If you don't practice a specific skill for a period of time, what begins to happen with your confidence over that period of time? It goes. It goes. Yep. Did you see my hand? My hand yep. is it goes is, down. Is it goes yeah. down. It goes down. Is, is that strange or what? Yeah. Think once you hit it, you'd you'd stay there. Yeah. Doesn't that, work that, like that. It, it doesn't work that way. No. So what really I help the, the people that I coach recognize very simply is we're all on different levels, mm -hmm. on different skill sets. We all have a different level of confidence mm -hmm. on different skill sets, but we can all continue to increase our confidence if we're wet, ready and willing to practice mm -hmm. that new skill set. Mm -hmm. So confidence grows as skill sets are learned and practiced and maintained. <laughs> That's again, yeah. and maintained. Yes. You just say, well, man, I was up here at the top of my game. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden I'm going, what happened? Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's just one of those very simple aspects of life. Mm -hmm. How do we build confidence? Mm -hmm. We learn the right skills. Yes. We practice the right skills. We maintain the right skills. Definitely. H have I seen myself decrease and increase in skill sets through the years? I have. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's just like, okay, do I want to exert the time, energy, and effort to rebuild that and yeah. if it's important if it's truly valuable and important i'll say yes i must get back to where i once was mm -hmm. and i will set up the time the energy the effort to rebuild those skill sets yeah and then, and then get the commensurate confidence that goes well that higher level of skill yeah definitely yeah i like that that's really 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 helpful just um practicing the skill set will bring in the confidence and it's like I think of like myself like there was a time I hadn't ridden a bike in years and I was like I probably can't do it I got on the bike <laughs> I was a little bit shaky but I was like after a while I was like oh it, it just kind of came back to me and obviously I couldn't go and do Tour de France or anything but I was like I was like wow I'm still I've still got it still got it and even if I haven't driven for a, it has to be for like more than a month or two I do kind of feel like, oh, I can't, I don't think I'm going to be that 
nippy at doing all the turns because in London you need to be a skilled driver because the roads are really small there are a lot of unskilled drivers but you know just to manage the small roads and the other drivers and it, it, it but it does come back and I, and when you were describing it to maintain it it reminded me of um uh, when Usain Bolt was getting all of those Olympic gold medals, one, two, three times, and those are like a space of four, eight, that's 12 years. It's every four years he was doing that. So that's a lot of work to focus on the skill set and then keep peaking at the right time because he has to peak at the Olympics and to maintain that. It's a lot of work to go into the behind the scenes and things. And that really kind of made me think, okay, to be an excellent speaker, it's not just like, yes, I'm a great speaker of this much. It's to keep on growing and trying to maintain it the maintenance is where that work is going to be i think a lot of it because anybody can escalate and get yeah i'm a great speaker but how do you maintain that that's that's the work the maintenance i'm a great speaker yeah <laughs> yeah that was good use of your vocal right there see you know <laughs> pitch change in there yeah <laughs> <laughs> and, and but that's really the simplicity of it Mm. And, and all the research over and over and over in every yeah. realm shows the same thing. Yeah. It just shows the same thing that, yeah. uh, you know, you may be born genetically and, and physiologically mm -hmm. to be at a higher level of performance. Like Usain yeah. Bolt as an example, you bring him up. Yeah. Usain Bolt has a, a good start, but not a great start. Part of the reason he doesn't have a great start is because he's got those long legs. Yeah. And it takes yeah. him a while to get those long legs yeah. really moving. Yeah. But at about 40, 50, 60 meters, those yes. long legs are churning. Yeah. And he just starts getting further and further and further ahead of the competition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just understanding. Out of the box, he's average Not, or a little above average. Yeah. But it's yeah. in the it's in the the time on the track and yeah. the, the time to build the momentum where all of a sudden you just go. Nobody can touch this guy. No one. <laughs> <laughs> no one. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so, and, and that comes true with every arena of our life. Mm. Every single arena of our life. It's mm -hmm. the same way. If you don't touch a keyboard for a month, you yeah. can sit back down and you go, okay, where, where are my fingers on the keyboard? Yes. <laughs> if we don't get behind the wheel for a yeah. month or a couple of months and we go, mm -hmm. okay, got to be more conscious yes. of what we're doing. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's really, really helpful. And I think that, that is, like you said, it goes into many, many areas, not just speaking. Definitely the skill set and maintaining it as well, definitely. And I wanted us to move on from the nerves and the fear to speak. Going on to, I like that um, when we've got questions, they've got like three parts or four parts or seven or different parts. So it's <laughs> kind of like a, a bigger question. So the next question I wanted to talk about is what are the three basic parts of a great presentation because I would have usually thought it's introduction, body and the clothes, which is what mm. a lot of people tell you. It's often how it's structured in school, mm -hmm. um, how you write your essays, you need introduction, the middle bit and a conclusion, mm -hmm. always the same. But what mm -hmm. is, why are those not the three basic parts of a great presentation? <laughs> yes. Well, in the delivery, those are the three parts. Mm -hmm. But I look at, again, a great presentation as being much broader, much yep. bigger. And that's why I touched on earlier the preparation, mm -hmm. yep. the delivery, and then the follow through. The preparation, mm -hmm. the delivery, and the follow through. And, and when I've asked the point after I've made those three separations of people, what's mm -hmm. the most important of those three bigger picture pieces? And most people say, well, it's probably preparation. And I go, that's not a bad guess. Yeah. But in the bigger picture, it's not really the most important. It's number two, but yeah. it's not the most important. Now, why would I say that? If you know anything, as an example, about the game of tennis yeah. or the game of golf mm -hmm. or the game of uh, baseball yeah. or the game where there's any kind of instrument to move the ball, yeah. you know, Wimbledon, you got right there in your, you know, your backyard, yeah. anything that's, it, it is not the contact with the ball <laughs> that makes the difference. What makes the difference, Leanne? What makes the difference? The, 
It's the power behind the racket, though, isn't it? It's the follow through. Ah, oh, the follow through. It's the yeah. follow through. Because if your racket hits the ball yeah. and then doesn't follow through, if your club hits the golf ball yes. but doesn't follow through, if yeah. your bat hits the ball but doesn't follow through. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you can always see the motion because they don't just hit it and pull it back. They make it go all the way. Like if when you, yeah. If your foot hits the football. Yeah. But doesn't follow through. No, it's not going to have the impact. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, so that is then the bigger picture. So mm. if, if we're going to have something positive, from the point of view of this material that mm. we've shared today, the only way it's really going to have the kind of long-term <sighs> impact and positivity mm -hmm. is the follow through. What yeah. does that really mean? That means review yeah, and review and review, otherwise mm -hmm. known as practice, practice, practice. Yeah. A great coach can teach his footballers, gentlemen, this is how you, put that ball into the net. Yes. But if they don't practice that exact movement, mm -hmm. nothing happens. Yeah. No improvement, no growth, mm -hmm. no real confidence because mm. they have not put in the time, energy, and effort to practice the right skill repetitively. Yeah. yeah. Just when you're talking about that, I just came to mind because we're talking about a lot of sports. Um, it's not a big sport for me, but it is big. But basketball, because um, on Netflix, there's Michael Jordan's show, kind of documentary, The Last Dance. And then obviously, earlier on in this year, sadly, when Kobe Bryant passed away, a lot of footage came out about the extra work, the hours he would put in, like within that industry, how many people would put in the extra hours, not just come to training, but go hours before, stay hours after, a lot, a lot. And you know, and we only just see the, the, the game, you know, but there's hours. Yeah. See that? <laughs> see that? That, that, that is the game. Yeah. This is the, is the practice. Yeah, definitely so. It is. It's a lot. It's a, and, and then you think if people are doing that to play basketball, people are doing that to do tennis, people are putting the extra to do athletics, what more so must you do? to speak it's you know there's a lot a lot behind it a lot more yeah i just when you talk about practice 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 because that was a theme throughout that show and oft, often the stuff that was said earlier as well a lot a lot a lot yeah i do think i don't think practice makes perfect for me because <laughs> i don't know if i'll ever ever be perfect i don't think i ever want to be but i think it does give like what you said it instills confidence and increases for me my skill set can i give you a new word yeah I want to give you a new word. Definitely. Practice makes excellent. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Perfection is unachievable. I think so. But practice, especially with good co yeah. coaching, <laughs> yeah. makes excellent. Definitely. And if we're all striving for excellence, Leanne, yeah. then we can have our own level of personal excellence and nothing else really matters. Definitely, definitely. I like that. Practice makes excellence. Definitely. I like that. Everybody strive for their own excellence. Yay. That, that's the key. Yeah. For there. So, so are you going to need to break up this interview in two or three parts? Wow. <laughs> we might do. We might do part one and then do part two. Maybe, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I'm on to the last question now, actually. Yeah, oh, we're on to the last question. Um, so this last question, well, kind of part A and part B. Um, what exciting things are happening in your business that our listeners might be interested in, staying in touch with you to find out about that you'd like to share with us? Sure. Well, one thing is what we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. the the ability to connect with people yeah. all over the globe via this incredible technology it's mm -hmm. not perfect it yep. still has glitches it still yeah. has a little bit of difficulty mm -hmm. 
difficulty like you and I experience it. But the, but the biggest thing is there's an ability now to connect with people globally. Yeah. Practically at the drop of a hat. Yeah. And, and it is astounding to me to be able to do the kind of thing that you and I are doing now. Now, yeah. that's leading me to, to deliver something. I have had in the last several months two really sweet young women, mm -hmm. one from Portugal, wow. one from France, from Paris. Nice. Join, yes, join me for what I offer four times a week. Wow. Four times a week, mm -hmm. I offer a free, F-R-E-E, -E, free, yeah. no strings attached, free, safe. It's a safe environment to practice and get coaching mm -hmm. on what we're doing right now. So it's Great. what I call me for free and ask me anything. Yay. Me for free and ask me anything. And, and I'll give you that link to the meetup dot com location where yeah. they can register and they can see the four sessions I offer every single week, mm -hmm. 45 minutes long. It's short. It's sweet. It's we get in, we get some stuff done. Every single person gets a chance to practice, get some yeah. coaching feedback, get some peer feedback mm. and then get a, a, what I call a little nugget of wisdom that I always deliver at the tail end to say, this is something then you need to know and understand and begin to practice. And so they walk away right. with a chance to practice, which yeah. is critical. Mm -hmm. And then they also walk away with a new little nugget, a new little tip, a new little principle that mm. they can consider as they go forward. Four opportunities every week. That Two sounds on great. One on Wednesday, one on Thursday, different times of the day. Yeah. And so that is my offering to the world. Yeah. So I've got people that have joined me, like I said, now from literally Europe, from all over the United States. And, and we just have a blast because yeah. it's conversational. It's, it's relaxed. It's safe. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they have fun in the, the bigger picture. And that's the main, main really thing. If they're having fun, they want to come back and do it more and more and more. Yeah, sounds great. That sounds like a great thing. So it's four times a week um, and it's every week. And, and it's a safe place for them to practice speaking. And they get feedback from you, feedback from their peers. And it's on the meetup.com. Like, who wouldn't want to go? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, if, if you're UK and have that beautiful British accent, then yeah. you add a little extra spice into the bigger picture. Yeah. Or as in the case of these two ladies, they had sort of a French accent. Mm. Then it just, the rest of us go, Oh, I love your accent. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of entertainment and a lot of camaraderie and a lot yeah. of conversation and, and people learn and have a good time. Sounds brilliant. Definitely. I'll, I'll definitely put the link in the show notes for that one. And then just kind of coming in for a close now. And um, do you have any final thoughts, George, that you'd like to kind of share with our listeners about anything you've said today or something else that's mm. come to mind? Mm -hmm. Good. Leanne, this may shock you and the, sh the listeners as well. There are four basic aspects of communication. Mm -hmm. Two are outgoing, two are incoming. Two are outgoing, two are incoming. The two that are incoming is by way of reading and listening. The two that are outgoing are speaking and writing. Mm. Four basic kinds of communication. Mm -hmm. Now, we've spent a lot of time, almost an hour, right at an hour, over an hour. Yeah. We've talked about just in the arena of speaking. Yeah. But in, in my opinion, speaking is not the most important skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I alluded to it a little bit earlier. You mm -hmm. know what I believe is truly the most important skill? The most important skill to help us connect with other people? Listening. I think. I learn a lot when I listen. I think I learn more when I listen rather than I talk. Because I know what I know. But I don't know what everyone else knows. So that's why I like to listen. Yeah. Leanne, you've hit it. That's the magic button. Yeah. That's the magic button. Mm -hmm. The book that I'm reading right now is a more beautiful question. Mm. And if you're going to ask questions, 
then you have to listen to the answer. Yes. And, and asking good questions and then really truly deeply listening to people yeah. makes all the difference in our ability to connect. And the world would be a different place if we yes. were less about talking and more about listening. Yeah. So if I could ever impart a nugget of wisdom that would very simply be use the foundation of all communication, mm -hmm. listening to a much greater degree. Yeah. Your life, your relationships will, will be so much better. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's really, really poignant to end our conversation on. Excellent. Excellent. And, um, thank you so much for that. I've learned so much. I've taken notes. Um, so I can't wait to write up. Um, I'm going to put this on my Instagram page when, when it's the release date and stuff. I'm really excited about this one going out, what people are going to say, what they've learned, what they're going to implement. It's going to be a good one. Um, do you want to share like your social media links or do you want me to put them in the show notes? Do you want to just say them? Put out? it in the show notes. Uh, you know, I'm, great, I'm great. on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. I've got a website that's in the process of being updated and renewed. So it's not yeah. the first place I tend to send people, yeah. but I love to make more connections on LinkedIn. In. I love to have people connect with me on Facebook and uh, you know I just love the social interaction and the opportunity to drop a little nugget of value into someone's life yes. and then especially say George you know you shared something that made a difference in my life mm -hmm. definitely wow that's been so great George thank you so much for coming on the podcast today I've learned so much I've laughed as well I've learned I've listened I've tried to do everything <laughs> take notes it's been such a great uh it's been such a great um time really and I was like saying to you we'll only be about 30 minutes 40 minutes and we're still here but it's such a huge topic it's so hard to say right we'll only do it for this amount of time and we're not going to say anything more but it's it's a huge part of communication I've really learned so much you've added so much value to the podcast and i cannot wait to get this one out. i'm really really excited so thank you so much george for coming on the podcast today thank you leanne it has truly been a joy for me god bless you <laughs>